Hi all, this is the UT Houston Residency Overview. I am the Program Director, Grace Lindhorst, and this is a presentation we developed for you prior to your interview with us uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks, just to try and answer some questions you might have in advance and go over some logistical aspects of your interview day and of our program. So let's get started. Our residents uh, work out of uh, several main hospitals and facilities. One of the primary facilities we work out of is LBJ Hospital, which is our county clinic. We also work out of Memorial Hermann Hospital, which is where we take the bulk of our trauma call, and that's also where our private clinics for our faculty are located. We also rotate through MD Anderson and Methodist Hospital with some of our faculty for some subspecialty experience. A little bit about LBJ Hospital. The clinic was actually reopened in 2015 after a massive renovation. Um, we have a primary resident clinic and operating room within that facility. There's actually two main operating rooms. The main hospital is more for patients that may require um, more subspecialty care or are sicker patients and therefore need to be in a hospital setting. The ambulatory surgery center is where we do the bulk of our surgeries, primarily cataract surgery, glaucoma surgery, retina surgery, uh, for patients that are a little healthier and don't need to be in the main hospital. In our clinic, we have seven ophthalmology lanes, as well as a minor procedure room where we do plastics and pterygium minor surgeries weekly. Um, we also have a variety of lasers and photography equipment uh, to help with patient care. Here are some pictures of the waiting room area at our county clinic. You can see it's very spacious and nice. Here's some of the uh, rooms within the clinic. Uh, the top left, you can see one of our exam rooms with a soot lamp and a workstation. To the top right is our laser room. We have uh, several different lasers that we use. In our bottom left, you can see our minor procedure room, where, as I mentioned, we do blepharoplasties, toaster repair, pterygium surgery. Um, and then to your bottom right is our uh, work room for our residents and our faculty to discuss patients, put in notes, uh, make phone calls, etc. This is some pictures of some of the equipment we have. As you can see in the operating room, we have a brand new Zeiss operating microscope. Um, in the clinic, we have uh, B scanners, an optos, topographer, OCT. In the operating rooms, we have uh, two Centurion cataract machines. We also just recently purchased two brand new vitrectomy machines, and we have both of those uh, pieces of equipment also available to us in our main OR as well. Here's a photo of one of our uh, ambulatory surgery center suites, and you can see it's really spacious. Uh, everything is very new and modern, and it's uh, a really nice place to operate in. Here's a, a picture of the Memorial Hermann Hospital. Um, you can see it's uh, several buildings. Uh, one is the main hospital, which is actually one of the busiest trauma centers in the United States. Um, that is where our, ro our residents will do their consult rotation for inpatient consults and ER consults, and that's where we get the bulk of our uh, trauma call coming through that main hospital. Uh, this is also the building that houses our uh, faculty private clinics, so you would be spending a lot of time in those clinics as well. We also spend time with MD Anderson. Um, we have several faculty who are affiliated with MD Anderson and specialize in uh, ocular oncology. Dr. Ismali, Dr. Kim, and Dr. Scheffler are all very well known in the community and they um, provide us with the opportunity to really see some uh, uh, specialty care in those areas, which is uh, something very unique, I think, to our program. 
Our curriculum is divided into really six month blocks. You'll spend uh, half the year at LBJ and half the year in our private clinic, which is the Sizzik Eye Clinic. Um, and those rotations will be mixed up. Each of the subspecialties will um, be represented. So you'll have opportunities to rotate through our, our cornea service, our glaucoma service, retina, et cetera. Um, and then you'll see all of that at the LBJ clinic as well. We have an online lecture curriculum right now because of COVID, which is a half day protected time per week. Uh, we also have a health and wellness program that um, is available to all of our residents um, with different um, opportunities to watch podcasts and um, see what resources are available. We have a weekly Grand Rounds right now um, where the residents present cases and our faculty can weigh in on management decisions. Uh, in the future, once we um, are able to do more in-person sessions, we intend to have more of a hybrid session where we do some online lectures and some in-person lectures with our faculty to give you opportunities to interact and ask questions. So we think that will be um, nice to go back to once, once we're able to do so. Uh, many of you have probably heard about plans for an integrated PGY one year throughout the country uh, where we hope to do six months of ophthalmology um, in the PGY one year, which will allow for more elective time during your PGY two through four years. This is something that we're currently in the process of uh, integrating into our program, so would not necessarily impact you all your first year, but will most likely be implemented during your residency, so something just to be aware of. We are very um, aggressive with our surgical curriculum. We have our PGY2s going to the OR early on so that you all get experience and exposure right off the bat. We also have an IC simulator and give you time to um, work through that and basically practice all those steps in a, a safe environment. We also have wet lab sessions that we set up throughout the year to again give you some opportunities to uh, practice using the, the machines on um, either pig eyes or now they have really cool fake eyes that, that we're able to use. There's an opportunity if you would like to get certified with the Femto lasers with some of our faculty. And we also um, offer experience with premium laser, I'm sorry, premium lenses, both in our private clinics and at LBJ Hospital. So you'll have exposure to all of those technologies. Um, as I mentioned, we do a lot of surgery in our program. Um, we are very, um, motivated to get you all in the OR early. By the time you are a PGY3, most of our second year residents are doing full cases on their own um, at least a couple of times. And by the time they get to third year, you can really hit the ground running with regard to cataract surgery. But as you can see with these numbers, you're really getting a broad spectrum of uh, surgical experience and I think with regard to our open glows, we might be one of the highest in the country. Um, so you will get plenty of experience in all of the surgical subspecialties so that you can really um, feel comfortable in all of those areas and have exposure in the event that you would like to pursue fellowship in one of those areas. Even with COVID, uh, our uh, PGY4s were all averaging around 200 cataracts. So we really, we're proud of their hard work and, and how much we were able to accomplish despite some of those limitations during that year. Um, we believe in research and we expect all of our residents to participate in research with the goal of hopefully um, getting a publication by the time you finish your residency. We have a, a research team to support you and Dr. Chung is um, very involved in creating a a schedule for you all and a timeline so that you can stay on track throughout your residency um, and try to actually achieve those research goals. Um, during your private university rotation, you'll have a half day per week set aside to work on uh, your research program. So that's, uh, we think, been really helpful in, 
in getting our residents involved in research and hopefully uh, completing that research by the time you finish residency. Just to give you an idea of what some of our residents have done after graduation from residency, um, you can see it's a, a pretty good mix. Uh, several of our residents have, have done fellowships, many have done private practice. Um, our message to you all is that graduating from our program, you will have the opportunity to do whichever you choose. If you would like to go into fellowship, um, we are very supportive of that. And our residents who pursue fellowship have done very well in the match. If you want to go into private practice, you are going to be very well trained to do so um, and will not feel like you need additional training to go out on your own because you will have uh, seen and done just about everything while you're, while you're here. So um, the opportunities to pursue whichever path you choose are available to you. A uh, little um, logistical overview, just questions that seem to come up. Um, educational time, as I mentioned before, we try to give you some uh, academic time um, for research and for lectures. So that ends up being about two half days per week when you're on your university rotation. Um, you have five days of educational leave and five fellowship interview days. Um, and certainly if you choose to do more interview days, then you can take uh, leave to do so. Um, the vacation schedule is 15 days per year and you are on call uh, on average about eight day, every eight days as a second and third year. I'm sorry, as a first and second year, uh, covering three hospitals, LBJ, Herman, and Sizzik. And then as a third year resident or PGY4, you'll be on backup call during the week and one weekend per month. A little bit about Houston. Um, it's the fourth largest city in the US. So if you look at Houston proper, it's a population of just over 2 million. But if you add in the suburbs, it's probably closer to 6 million. It's the home to the Texas Medical Center, which is the largest medical center in the world, uh, close to 5 million patient visits per year. We have every professional team you could look for, uh, football, baseball, basketball, soccer, and even hockey. So if you or your family members are interested in those experiences, they can um, certainly see it all while they're here in Houston. It's a very diverse city. There's more than 90 languages spoken here, more than 40 colleges and universities, over 11,000 restaurants, uh, an amazing theater district, lots of museums, galleries, lots of things for you and your family members to do in the, in the city um, during the weekend on the weekends. So it's a really uh, fun place to live. The cost of living is very low in comparison to other big cities, which is nice because you can live close to where you work and feel safe doing so. There are lots of uh, companies headquartered in Houston. So if you have a significant other that might be coming with you and needs a job outside of medicine, there are lots of opportunities for them. The weather's really great. You guys, unfortunately, aren't here in person to uh, see it, but the uh, climate is really mild year round. We have really nice winters, a little warm in the summer, but nothing that a little air conditioning can't help with. So it's a, a really pleasant place to live all year round. Here's a couple of pictures of the city just to kind of give you an idea of, of what the city looks like and some things you might enjoy. Here's some pictures of our uh, residents and faculty in prior years just doing some fun things together. We try to have a social schedule where we can, you know, spend some time together outside of work. Uh, we've had to limit that a little bit with COVID, but hopefully we're getting back to that social schedule soon. There's lots of great restaurants that we like to expose you all to, and there's lots of fun things to do here, and we, we tend to really have a good time. A little bit about your interview day. There is actually three blocks set up for the interview day. One block is your interview that you have signed up for, and the other two blocks are question and answer sessions with our residents. You don't have to attend both of those blocks. We would 
like for you to attend one of those additional blocks just to get any questions you might have answered by them. You could attend both blocks if you want after your interview. They are um, just open to you to attend and certainly you can go to both or you can certainly, if you've got all your questions answered after the first session, you can leave. Depending on your interview spot, these blocks may be before or after your session, so that should be in your email with the times for that. And you would just join those virtually on your schedule. When you're actually in your interview, there are six interview rooms. Five of those are actual interviews and one is a break room that you'll just have 10 minutes just to kind of catch your breath and drink a glass of water. Um, each interview is 10 minutes and then there'll be a two minute transition in between the rooms. The system will cut you off at the end of the 10 minutes. So if you are mid-sentence and suddenly the screen goes blank, that's unfortunately the way that the system works. There will be a little auditory cue at the two minute point. You'll hear a little ding and that's your signal that there's two minutes left in that interview. So hopefully you and your interviewer will know to, to wrap things up. Um, and then as I mentioned, the resident room is an informal room where there'll be several residents physically located in a room on the screen that are there just to answer questions. I think they have a little PowerPoint presentation that they'll give you with maybe some other pictures of the facilities and things like that just to kind of refresh your memory and answer any questions you might have. So hopefully this will um, prepare you for your day and hopefully I've answered some questions that you might have had going into your day. We are super excited to meet all of you and we hope that you will enjoy your interview day with us and that we will um, see you again down the road. So if you have any questions about your interview day or about the process, you are welcome to contact uh, Ms. Colleen Kapoy. She is the person who sent you um, the original email and she's our program coordinator. So if you have any issues technical or with scheduling, you know, you're welcome to give her a call and uh, she can help you figure all of that out. Otherwise, we will see you on your interview day. Best of luck.